channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing this Cloudy Sky Mini Lol Loopsie. This is part of the brand new Mini Lol Loopsie reboot collection. In my last video, I reviewed the Sweets Fair, which contains three different dolls. If you want to see more about my my opinions on the on these dolls compared to the original Lol Loopsie, as well as a more in-depth review on the style and the quality of the dolls and I recommend checking that video out first because I'm probably not going to cover it this much in this review. But anyway, just to sum it up, the quality of these compared to the original dolls, I have a whole collection over there, is actually very decent. It seems that the company that owns these dolls, which is MGA, has managed to keep the quality exactly the same as the originals. The only difference has been the packaging. Here, Here's one of my original packaging. Um, the original packaging was very hyper-realistic in a way, it usually came in a house format and it matched the doll. That was pretty much it though. If I turn this package over to the side, you could see that there are actually six different dolls you can collect. I also have Confetti Carnival right here, and I will be reviewing her in a separate video. But today I'm going to be reviewing these one-pack dolls and see if they're any different from the three-pack suite set and if they are worth your money. So let's go over some facts. I originally found these for sale at Walmart. They costed $7 each for these mini packs. The three pack costed $20 to $25. And the one packs come with one doll, three accessories, and one animal. And the set can fold out into a play set. This packaging also says that this is a choking hazard because these are very, very small parts. Now let's take a first look at the packaging. The packaging is very square shaped and has a clear window with your doll in the center surrounded by all of her items. At the top is a magenta bow that ties together a stitched on cloud. And onto the right of that, it has a text wall that says cloudy sky in pink text. This looks on in this set particularly. There are ropes tied down to the sides as well as in the background of the box. And it seems to attach to some pink wooden thing. I'm not sure what that is yet. On the bottom, there is a grass portion with a bush that has the mini La Loopsy logo on it, as well as the warning and a white picket fence. The side shows all the sweets for dolls and the back has some cute doily decorations with a blue background and the box art of our doll. It also has some information about your doll, such as the information she was sewn on, what she was sewn from, and what her personality is. And I'll go into that later, of course. It also has a 10th anniversary logo. And on the bottom, it has all of the different copyright claims and encourages you to collect all of the dolls and connect their set. And without further ado, I'm going to open Cloudy Sky. Just like that, her box slides out. We can see on her box now that the green the green patch is eliminated, instead replaced by some clouds on the bottom with the pink wooden texture. Again, if we turn it around, we can see the bow is tying back to reveal a tree and a cute little, very pretty cottony forest. These two flaps actually fold apart. We also get a checklist which shows all the dolls and what all their play sets look like on box and a card that encourages the buyer to fill out a form about their experience with the toy. Anyway, if you want to learn more about that then please please check out my other review because I do go into more depth with that. We can see on this side the rest of this this wooden piece, a harp, and on the two flaps, we could see the bow ton tying to see some clouds with angel wings, stars, cotton candy on a stick, bushes, a tree, and some stars. I'm actually thinking that this is maybe a hot air balloon. And also just one more thing about the packaging is that it feels very sturdy. It feels mu very much like cardstock. This is not just your simple cardboard, paper, packaging that would tear apart easily. I really feel like this could actually hold up easily. So if you're kind of wondering about the reusable packaging, then I'm hoping that this puts your worries to rest. Also, something that's really cool is that this this plastic flap can actually be saved because it's made of the same nice cardstock material and it has a clear window. So when you're done unboxing your doll and you have all the pieces, then you could just slide it back into this and carry it around. You could even attach some ribbons on the sides and carry it like a purse. And I think that's really cool because I don't remember that being much of a thing with the original Hello Lucy packaging. It would mostly just be really open and then whenever I was trying to carry it around, all my dolls, excess, very tiny accessories would fall out. And I'm not sure if this was a part of the original packaging or not. I would always rip into the packaging and tear it apart because I was a kid and didn't really know better. However, I still think it's really nice to include. And this also really really encourages 
reuse of this packaging. And now comes to getting the doll out. Now I struggled with this in the last review and I think what you're supposed to do is just kind of take it by the bottom and slide this plastic piece out that has all of your doll and accessories in it. I'll check this out in a moment but first we see the same exact scene as with the purchase packaging but now we could see a blue padded floor and bottom blower wall. We could see a blue sky with some clouds. If we look up on the ceiling we could see a lot more clouds and two ropes tied in the back making four ropes and there's also a little ba basket lining with some doily pattern under that and i think this is actually a hot air balloon which is pretty cute however just because i'm a fan more of a fan of the original packaging i preferred it when it was a house opposed to a just random outdoor scene because the house actually would really give your doll a place to live of course you could always imagine your doll living in this space this could be her house However, I really just appreciated it when they had this packaging. It didn't just feel like I was getting a backdrop with it. It felt like I was getting a whole home for my doll to live in, as well as a home that I could reuse for all of my other toys. That's probably just a, a personal gripe you could use. Your imagination with this new set is absolutely unlimited. I'm just making that little notion. Also, something interesting I'm noticing here is that there's a little arrow that goes between the blue padded floor and the outdoor board, outdoor pink border. Now I'm wondering if I fold this. Oh wow! I can actually fold this bottom piece out, and it reveals more blue blue padded floor and a whole grass scene, as well as two detached bushes that are green and light green with checker pattern. This new floor reveals three clouds all going in a line with some stars and a grass. Now I'm wondering how I'm supposed to do this because it looks like there's some fold lines on the sides. This is very intriguing. I've noticed that the, with the last review of the... I wonder if that's... A, it looks like it folds out. That's the thing. That's like what's really confusing me. Okay, yeah, I'm checking the pa I'm checking the packaging. Oh wait, wait, wait. Okay, there is a little manual that comes like that comes out like this. Yeah, there is a part that can fold out like that end. There's a little um there's a slit on the side of the flaps, so I think if I put yeah, there's a slit also in the middle of the bushes. So if I attach I this little loopsy this little loopsy brand seems to really this new Law Loopsy Brew seems to really care about making the place that's really reusable. And I think that's great because even brands like LOL, which make their place that's reusable, those are made of plastic. And eventually when the owner of that toy gets bored, then that plastic is just going to be waste. If someone gets bored of their Law Loopsy place, they could just throw it out in their recycling because it's paper. And if we put two bushes on both sides, then it can see a pair of stand up, but I'm having a bit... I'm having a bit of trouble trying to keep the flap still, which is understandable because this is paper. It's been wedged in this packaging for a really, really long time. So I'm going to set that off to the side. It actually is very cute from afar. It's, I actually kind of like it. I just kind of wish it was a house or it had some like accessibility beyond just being like a hot air balloon. But, like, where is she going to live? Really? Like, especially if, if you like don't already own a dollhouse for your dolls and you want a dollhouse for your dolls, where is your doll? supposed to stay if you don't want them to live in a hot air balloon that has literally no furniture. I feel like I'm being way too intense about this. But anyway, yeah, basically that basically they as well as there's oh yes, there's just so much of stands and stuff you miss completely hidden in the floorboards. And I wouldn't have known that if it weren't for this packaging showing it. And that's kind of unfair because if they don't show that it's a feature in the three pack then how are people supposed to know it's even a feature at all? Even if it's something that's introduced to them that like, oh yeah, this bottom piece can fold out, then how would people automatically know, oh, that would just mean, this, that would just mean all, all of the play sets do that. Like I feel there could have been some better direction with that because I could see that being missed by a lot of people. Anyway, back to this review. And here she is, ah, she's so cute. Oh my gosh. Oh, I don't even know where to start. Let's just read her box description. Cloudy sky was sewn on August 22nd. She was sewn from wisps of a cloud and her personality is girly and soft-spoken. I personally have a bit of a problem with her saying that her personality is girly because girly has a more kind of stereotyped view of femininity and it says it's kind of limited only to females. And I feel like there's a difference between saying feminine and girly because girly is more associated with something negative like oh that person is too girly 
or oh that is for girls that is a really girly thing it almost is like a term that is used to more limit expression of feminine design instead of encourage it would have appreciated if they they replaced the word girly with feminine okay i guess i'm just gonna start with her hairstyle she has pink hair that actually is a gradient that has white on the bottom and on the top it's a very bright very very vibrant pink and it fades it fades downwards. She also has a silver angel crown that's suspended, suspended between her two tied up buns. I guess they look like buns, but they have a very twirly texture to them, like they're cloud puffs. And also her the fringe over her hair has some curls on it to look like clouds. And if we look on the back, we can see that her hair has a yarn texture and it's also being parted into two parts. Her hair also has a very, very pearlescent texture if we get out the other doll from the interview, we could see that they use, the normally dolls use very matte textures compared to her hair, which kind of makes her a bit special. Not like the other dolls are, not like the other dolls aren't special, but I feel like it makes her unique compared to most all Lucy's. And something also unique about this doll is that she has blue eyes. To my knowledge, there's only one other doll in this series that has this bright blue eyes. Most of them have just black button eyes. And she's, she's she is the only second one. Oh, also in her hair, she has a pink. A, a bright pink bow that almost kind of blends into her outfit. Her eyes have two eyelashes and the stitching in the middle of the eyes is black, which kind of make her, can make her look a bit creepy because it makes her, because it makes her bl bright blue eyes look like the, her pupils are X shapes and she, that she's staring into your soul. She's still cute, she's still cute. However, it might not be, it might not be your taste if you're more used to the all loopsies with the black eyes. She also has a, a white star next to the bottom of her right eye. And she also has two little sewn on blush marks that are bright pink like her dress. And she also has a very pale skin tone. And for her outfit, she wears a bright pink dress that has an incredibly poofy skirt that has a tulette texture. Her top is pink and it has two silver two silver threads across. It doesn't look like they're attached to anything. It just looks like it's a very stretched out X across her chest. Anyway, she has long sleeves. The top of the sleeve is puffed and the middle is kind of tied and the ends are sort of loose. I don't know how to describe that, but it's one of those very elegant dresses you might, dress textures you might see at like a, a fancy party or something. And if we turn her around, we actually can see some translucent wings. They do have embedded glitter and they have a different texture than the rest of her body. They're kind of a bit rubbery and they feel kind of sticky. Um, they have four wings on each side. They, each of the wings have a stitched texture to them and there's a button holding them together. I think that's really cute. I have not, I have yet to encounter another La Loopsie that has wings. They're probably out there, but this is probably the only one in this collection that has them. And she has bare legs, but she has some short, short white socks with I don't know what to call these, though, pink shoes that have white bows and the shoes have one tying across her foot. And if we turn it up on the bottom, then we have three, then we can see three hearts in a line on her, both of her shoes. And if I just go over and feel the plastic, her hair feels okay. It feels very, very weird. Like it still feels, La Lucy hair is supposed to feel very hard, but also kind of has like a rubbery texture. Her hair kind of feels like that. It could be just because it's using a different paint, but feels just a bit weird. Her halo feels completely solid. Her skin feels like La Loopsie skin. And La Loopsie skin feels kind of a bit softer, more of a rubbery feeling, like the LOL OMG skin texture. Her eyes feel hard, and something I've noticed is that her eyes aren't really shiny. Uh, if I bring in this La Loops, you could definitely tell that one of the eyes has a shinier paint on it, and, the, and hers has very matte paint. That could just because of, be because of her different eye color, but I don't see why they couldn't have just applied a shiny varnish over her eyes. Um, her dress feels feels fine, feels like any little Lucy dress, and her legs also can swing. And her arms, they swing back and forth, but that's about it. And her head turns. And from what I can notice, her head doesn't seem to be bob bobbing back and forth. Sometimes with all Lucy's, their head will cock to one side. That won't be the condition with all of them, and it seems like that's not the condition with her. And let's move on to her pet. But wait, while we're still in the doll, I'm going to do a quick quality check of all her painting. Something kind of strange, I noticed it only kind of really seems to appear on camera, but on both of her sleeves, there seems to be see a bit of yellowish coloring. I can't really notice it that well in real life, but it's definitely there. Like it looks like there's a bit of shadow in those parts, like really dark shadow, almost like um, D&D miniature shade paint. 
it it's definitely way less noticeable in real life than it is on camera like it, on camera it looks way more yellow it just more it looks like really dark really dark splotches on her it also looks like there's a bit of a scratch on her sleeve though that could have just been from from uh, my hands though i don't know and there seems to be a, a lot of clear paint right under her bangs like it's only really noticeable in the shine of the camera but there's like some clear paint going right from the um, left of her face to the her bangs and that could just be from attaching her hair it's not that noticeable there's also a bit of a gap between on the right between her hair and her head and if we turn her around there's some really noticeable white paint splashes of her hair on her dress and her shoes there's some pink mixing into white on the back and some white splotches on the other shoe. And if we turn her upside down, we could see some plastic coming off from the mold, like some plastic that wasn't really shaved off correctly. Other than that, she's perfect. She looks fine. And I'm just looking at her like this. And of course, to keep their prices at, to keep this doll at $7 instead of $20 for an LOL surprise doll, they do have to probably skip some things like quality control. So they can make these dolls affordable for everyone. And for the most part, I didn't encounter anything that would completely interfere with her play, like locked joints or a head that wouldn't move. It just kind of some small painting stuff that if I really, really wanted to, I could easily fix. Anyway, now let's move on to her accessories. I'm gonna do her first one. Oh, I just dropped it. Her first one is a white poodle. It is facing sideways. It's not like a fully fully modeled pet it's only like a side view pet it only has two legs and on the back there's a little patch on its butt like we have a white poodle here she has a a all smooth body but two legs that are very puffed have this very puffed up texture that goes up all around she also has a very puffy tail which has a cloud cloudy texture and her head and her ears are completely with this cloudy puffy popcorn texture and she also feels slightly rubbery. I mean, either that or she's just really sticky. Wait, no, she is. I can kind of move. I can kind of move her a bit. Like she feels malleable. So I think, oh my gosh, I'm sorry. Anyway, she has one very, very, very shiny nose, oval shaped nose, no mouth, and two very tiny black eyes with eyelashes. I find interesting that compared to her owner, she actually has black eyes instead of blue eyes. Her eyes do have that very shiny finish that most of the loopsies do. Also, both of her ears are tied up in pink bows. And I think for the most part, she matches up with her doll pretty well. I don't know if I could exactly identify- If I if I was just picking up a random pile of wall loopsie pets, I just saw that dog. I don't know if I would instantly connect it to that owner, but she's still very cute. Now the next item is a basket. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be this warped. Um, anyway, it's a pink half egg shaped basket. It is like the same light pink as her. it's a bit light it's a bit more of the lighter pink of her sleeves it seems and it has a sort of crispy texture to it which sounds kind of awful and there's a, a bow on the side which is the same pink as the rest of the of the i am the rest of in the top of the box has a sort of doily print i'm not exactly sure what to call that but a doily wavy fringe and the inside is completely solid and also the top part is completely gold it has a very thick rope handle and the top has some sort of flower decals on it Wait, i find this interesting but she is i think gold goes well with her palette but it doesn't it, there's no gold on her a big key part of the la loopsy minis is that their accessories would always be the exact same color as the actual doll like it wouldn't just like let's say the doll has magenta hair and has a ma and has like a magenta accessory it wouldn't just be magenta it would be light magenta it would exactly match the doll in some way and while i can see this this outfit match this basket matches with her dress i don't see where the gold fits in anywhere it's, it's a very nice complimenting color but a lot of the lollipsy mini things uh, i found all more likely to actually match the doll and if i can try and test this she can she can kind of hold it most of the little loopsies don't seem to be able to hold their accessories anyway which is fine i just thought i just thought it was worth trying anyway her next accessory is a golden harp it's a bit small and the harp has a i guess if you could describe it it's a u shape with twisted ends it's all completely that very shiny gold oh it's also completely solid the strings look like they have some sort of 
waved knitted texture to them, but it's all solid. There's not really any strings that actually pluck. There's also a small knotted bow on one side of it, and the actual handle of the harp has a the same doily pattern on it. It's very pretty, actually. I just don't, I get, I get, I don't see how that gold fits into her exact design. It could have made her halo gold or the tips of her shoes gold. I, I feel like I'm cl complaining a lot like this, but a, a primary feature of the Lolly Pieces to me is that their accessories would exactly match the doll. Like you would be able to look at the accessory and say, oh yeah, I know, I, I can tell just by the color and the shade of the, and the shade of the accessory who that belongs to. You could, I feel like you could definitely tell who this belongs to just because it's a harp and a basket. Like just, if you just look at it, you could probably guess by theming. And I feel like I'm complaining too much. And her last accessory is what appears to be a shiny, a very, very shiny um, cotton candy holder. But it's actually very matte in real life. Like it has some slight shine, but it's not, it's not as shiny as it is on camera. Um, anyway, she has like a very, that same sort of cloud popcorn bunch texture for this cotton candy. And it has a very small holder, which is pink, which is matching pink, but it has some white curly stripes so that go down. This doll, I don't think I have that much differentiating thoughts for from the um, other review. I go into more depth about what I think about the art style and comparing these to the actual original Lollipsy dolls. I, I'm kind of now that the excitement that many Lollipsies come back, I'm kind of like not as excited about it. Like they definitely are very cute and I think I'm going to continue collecting them to build my new collection. They are very high quality um, these from the set to the actual doll, to their accessories. I think that's really nice. However, I feel like there could definitely be some better sort of direction, especially with the packaging. Um, and as well as something unfortunate, which no I noticed transferred from the old doll leaves to the new ones is the quality control. If I get one of my original dolls here and just give her a quick turn around, you could probably notice a lot of painting a lot of painting things, a lot of painting errors, and a lot of the same painting errors and quality control seems does seem to be that does seem to be present in these new dolls as well, which is kind of unfortunate. It's just kind of like, oh yay, they've been they're exactly the same. They're like just being brought back from the past, but at the same time, it's you know, you see all the quality issues and all of the very simplistic accessories and you're like oh nothing's really changed except for the art style i would have appreciated not for them to like give it the series a complete makeover i just would have appreciated mj to like at least maybe change the things about the quality maybe take the design to the next level in terms of making the designs a bit more visually interesting like this the basket for example it had the bow and the the bow blended right into the basket there's also no nothing you could put in it i mean to be fair, this you could have like put. Like, to be fair, there's nothing the set comes with that you would actually need to store in a basket that small. However, what if you like wanted to like pretend play with this doll and you wanted to like at least put some tiny beads in her basket, like pretend that's like some berry she found or something. I mean, they could at least like leave some room for imagination and put like a fake little wicker basket top on that and like say, oh yeah, well, um, you can it, it, like at least. Just leave some room for imagination instead of just giving a flat, a completely, completely flat lid where you could literally see the mold jointed, the mold being jointed to that. Uh, other than that, um, would I recommend this doll to anyone else? Like whether it be a original fan or someone new? Absolutely. I think it's really nice that these dolls are really cheap and affordable. Um, like $7.00 per mini doll and there's six different dolls in the collection that would get expensive but if you're just gonna buy one doll then think of it you're getting eight doll you're getting three different accessories you're getting a reusable play set um the doll is pretty high quality it's really cute and they're also the, all, the boxes also have clear windows you if there's any quality issues like any major quality issues you could just peek through the box and make sure it doesn't have that you can also watch a lot of reviews to make sure you avoid that but basically what i'm saying is seven dollars is a really good price for what is a very high quality reusable place they definitely thought this out whenever they were making this they were just like oh we were just gonna like the, the cardboard is gonna be nice no they wanted to make everything fun to reuse and i think that's really valuable especially now where a lot of the reusable toy parts are just plastic because once that toy becomes uninteresting, that plastic just becomes plastic again. But once a Lollipsy toy box becomes interesting, you can just 
recycle it. And also $7 is pretty good because a lot of things like LOL, which is ironically owned by <laughs> which is ironically owned by MGA, and MGA also owns all Lucy, like a LOL will cost $17 for one single doll. And with that you only get one outfit, one bottle, a bunch of stickers, and you don't even know who you're getting or what the quality will be. I absolutely recommend this doll for collectors and new people alike. However, if you're new to Law Loopsy, um, I would absolutely recommend using this clear plastic sheet to store your doll like And I'd also recommend this to a collector because they've actually seemed to brought a lot of the original dolls back in this series and if you're like me and you missed out on all the different little loopsy characters or you lost all their accessories and can never find them then i feel like these that would be a good place to catch up to that because the quality is exactly it is almost exactly the same even in terms of all of the all of the paint mess ups and all of the weird glue textures i really just kind of have complaints with the quality control and also just the instructions because really how was i supposed to figure out that i had to pull out the floorboards like that without the arrow or without it being the instructions because obviously that's a where a, a place they place they could hide it but for someone like me i like to make sure all my sets are organized and not ruin things unless i have to and I probably wouldn't be as willing to take that chance of just pulling my set apart. And there might even be some people who might not even realize that the set comes apart like that because it wasn't that obvious. And then they might just go for like years without realizing that their set had, that there, there's actually a bunch of pieces in their set that are missing. And I know that sounds silly, but I have done that before as a kid. And even now with a lot of secret components of toys or items that I get. Anyway. That was my final review for Cloudy Sky. Next time, I will be re reviewing Confetti Carnival. She looks super cute, and I'm super excited. And even later, I will be reviewing these mini LOL families. So, be sure to keep a lookout for that. Thank you for watching. Bye!